So, we were watching YouTube last week, as you do. CJR had an interesting topic. He said he wished the game market would crash. And then he said, hear me out. And we're saying, hear me out. Yep. Now, I don't necessarily like to piggyback on a topic unless I check with that person first. Like, hey, we have some thoughts and some feelings about this. Yeah. Do you mind if we do a video response? And we reached out to him and he was super- Being the humble Canadian he is. Yes, exactly. <laughs> he got back to us and he said, yeah. go ahead, Absolutely. sure. I'd love to hear your thoughts. This is something we've thought about because not everywhere has games for just go out there and hunt them and you can find good deals. It's not as easy here and I wish it was. And I wish I could I, tell you you're right, but I think you're not. I think the for this, like for our, our video response is gonna be different. Uh, CJR was able to collect his huge collection of games virtually for free. For virtually for free. Yeah. And and we kind of got into the game a little bit late as far we as did. the collecting goes. Yes. We've only been collecting for maybe about five years. So yeah. We've paid money for money. Our, you know, a lot of this stuff that's in here. Exactly. And uh, we'll we'll talk about our feelings about how. We, were, we went back and watched his video a couple of times and wrote down a couple of points that he had yeah. mentioned in the video and we'll just see where we both fall on this. And even if we have differing opinions, we still appreciate what he had to say. Oh, yeah. Because I know we've had people in the past, stuff. like, you know, see what we said and say, well, I don't agree with that. And that's okay. You're allowed to have a different opinion. It doesn't mean you don't value that person's opinion yeah. as an individual, yeah. right? <clears throat> right off the bat, he said, this could be a very selfish or self-serving notion to want the game market to crash. And I don't think that's necessarily correct because everybody wants something for a better price. He, it's not a selfish thing yeah. to want to be able to enjoy your hobby. He wants more. He wants yes. more of those, like he wants to complete his NES collection. Yeah. He wants to be able to get all, of, you know, complete a bunch of collections. We're not in that kind of area of collecting where we're trying to complete sets or consoles collections or whatever. Yeah. A whole library of something. We, we don't have the space and I don't feel the need to collect the filler. But yeah. I do agree with him. If the market would crash, yeah. I don't think I would feel too bad because there's lots of games that I still want that are way out of my price range. Right yeah, so. yeah. That bleeds a bit into our next topic, which is, but what about the value of our current collection? Because yeah. if you're thinking about the market crashing, then the value of your collection is also going to crash. Uh, here's the thing. There's, there's, I, I don't even think I said this to you. There's two different ways to look at value of, of your collection. Yes. There's a monetary value or there's a, a sentimental value. This whole game room is built for entertainment, for yeah. entertaining f family and friends. And that's the way I look at the library of games I have right now. It's like, there's hours. I look at it in hours, yeah. not so much in dollars. There are games we have in here that are valuable. Like uh, we have a, a sealed uh, uh, Zelda 2 there. It's just sitting on the shelf, it's sealed. It's got the black sticker on mm -hmm. it there, it's sealed. It's, a, it's probably just more of a piece of history there that I had to have. Yeah price tag at the end of the day only matters. It only well. matters if you're going to sell it. Yes. So that's how we distinguish the collector versus the investor. If you are looking at your collection as a potential investment for sale for the future, then yes, you're, you're, going, you're going to be upset if yeah. these game prices drop. Nobody wants to see anything they buy go down in value, especially if I just bought a retro game for $100 and then tomorrow it goes down to $5. <laughs> I'm going to be a little <laughs> bit upset. Because the next day, whatever, you're like, I you know? an extra day. But if we're game. talking about a game from two years ago that I bought that goes down, I've spent that money. Yeah. It's gone. We're not your investors. We're collectors. We want to play these games. As far as the collecting goes, I was grabbing a lot of almost everything at first just because there's so much I hadn't mm -hmm. tried mm -hmm. and I wanted a certain aesthetic in the game room I the game room look full and this and that but now then I ran out of room and it's more like well I don't want filler in here no more so I, I gotta take we started offloading stuff to put yeah. something that I want to play yeah so if I get rid of 20 filler games and I put add a game one game that I want to play that's way more valuable to me than having a great big set there. absolutely it just doesn't make sense to keep games that are never going to see console time no if you start looking at your hours mm -hmm. you'll never play like no. we have 1500 games there's no I'll, way i'll never play them i'll never i don't there's not enough hours but i mean that's part of the reason that i will strategically sometimes pick a game 
that you haven't played yet. I do the same. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to double dip. Unless it's something that is just absolutely that good that I'm like, you have yes. to play this, you have There's to play this. There's been a few this. games yeah. like that. Like you told yeah. me you need to play Link to the Past. You yeah. need to play it and I played it and it was a great game. I think we gotta look at it, the crash versus climb. Like, do we want this to crash or do we want it to keep climbing? What? end of the, like what side of the line what i want up? and what is actually going to happen are two different things exactly no i'm kind of in the same boat as cj where if if it were to crash tomorrow i would kind of laugh a little bit and be like ah, you know great and i think when we were talking about it and i told you i was a crash person i was shocked you were shocked i was shocked because you're one that'll look at the uh price charting yes. app we have you'll keep telling me oh this game is up to this now and stuff like that yeah and i was like it's just oh, that's cool it's more interesting for me to see than it changes anything for me like it doesn't bother me if a game goes down because i'll tell you on our price charting app i see a lot of more red arrows pointing down than I do green arrows pointing up and I would say we have a pretty tight collection when I see that red arrow go down I'm like doesn't matter to me I enjoy that game yeah. so it really doesn't matter so that's why I knew I was a crash person because it didn't matter yeah, you're not like, oh, I'm losing money as we no. speak. Sell stocks. No. Sell, sell, sell. Exactly. Yeah. He mentioned something which I thought was awesome and you touched on it a little bit too. Yeah. If everything were a tenth of the price the value tomorrow. tomorrow what what like would you would that matter to you there are games expensive games that we would love to have but just oh. haven't gotten there yet some of them are not necessarily out of our price range and then some of them completely are you talked yeah. about wanting sega genesis and snes games my library is pretty small when yes. it comes to those games mm -hmm. like i said i got in a bit late there so i don't have a lot of those there's a lot of games i'd love to try and then and now i'm kind of leaning into everdrives just mm -hmm. so that i can play those yeah. games and if i ever come across a physical copy of one that i really enjoy then i'll have to do something that yeah I want. yeah i know you mentioned uh crusader Ascenti. Right, Ascenti. It's, it's, that's that game is just outrageous in price right now and is it hellfire on the Sega Hellfire, Genesis? Hellfire, yeah. Uh, shmup. Yeah. Yep, that's a cool one there. There's a Is bunch the of shmups. Is that the one that and... Steve Craig mentioned in your soul? Yeah. Almost left your body? I was like, holy shit, there. <laughs> he got some good pickups this week. Jeez. Yeah, he did. Yeah. And uh, Lufia is another one you yeah. wouldn't mind having. Lufia, yeah, yeah. there's and a that, bunch. And that goes into your RPGs as well. I would love, I would love to have a complete inbox copy of Chrono Trigger. I know you would. Is that, it's still, that's looking over $1,000 right now, right? It's, so, it's crazy. Yeah. And then so. we don't have any of the Shadow Hearts. Any of no, them. there's, any of there's them. a bunch of games that you know I could I have a list as long as my arm longer probably of games that I wish I had. In my collection. Yeah, uh, Rising Zan and uh, Samurai Western. Yeah, there's another one. Another. After two. I played God Hand, there I started looking stuff that's more like that. Of course, for me, survival horror stuff. <laughs> I talk about Rule of Rose and Kuan all the time. I know Rule of Rose is kind of a mixed bag game. Not everybody loved it. It was more of a psychological horror. The mechanics weren't great. It was mostly melee fighting, whatever. And I just, I still want to play it, but I would play it and want to get it if it was a tenth of the price. Like, I'd be like, yeah, let's do that. Right. Love to have it. Yep. Kuan really gave me Fatal Frame and on emotia vibes kind of a mix yeah it, like from the visions of it really it looked a like a mix yeah. but i just i really that's another one i really want to play yeah. echo night beyond that's the one on the moon yeah that's on yeah, playstation 2 I, I think i showed you that one yeah and uh i'm terrified of anything like outer space wise i have no idea but outer space and ghosts and stealth and i'm like oh mm -hmm. i'm scared and i need to be scared because a lot of these survival horrors you're getting a little desensitized i'm getting a little though. desensitized yeah. Yeah. and then i have no mouth and i must scream it's a pc game and i don't even have necessarily a, a great way to play it but it's a point and click like very dystopian future five people still alive and they're being tortured for 109 years i think it is it's fucked up and dark and i want to play it and i just want to play it but it's so expensive and limited run did do did do a release have you tried to get it on ebay oh it's crazy it's pricey it's yeah. pricey i also want to read the book because it's based on a book but uh yeah those would be some of the ones i would if yeah. everything went down to, to, to summarize everything what do we see happening to the market in the future? 
Well, I told you I compare it to like gas prices. Yeah. They always go up. They might come back down, but they're always gradually going up. Yes. We're and gonna, I know CGI I compared it to a wave. Yeah. And he thought maybe as people age out, like he said the same they thing will. I said when they're when we're 70, maybe the nostalgia for the Nintendo won't yeah, be there. We won't be the people I'm talking to right now. We won't be collecting. So it's. I. You know what? I don't even know even at that point if they come down because. Uh, Atari did. Atari was yeah. your generation of, it was more of a casual gamer generation. Yeah. Yeah, a family-based uh, console I, where when Nintendo came on the scene, it kind of changed the game. Yeah. Like I told you, I said, I think there's just a much larger gaming population right now mm -hmm. than there ever has been. And it's only continuing to, continuing to grow. Yeah. So there's only going to be more of a demand. I collected toys. It's same thing happened. Oh yeah. Comic books was even worse after the Marvel movies hit. Boom! They just exploded, and they yeah. guess what? They've never come back down. And then games, games. Guess what? Pandemic. Boom! Your filler is gonna drop. Yeah. Gonna. But it's the games that people want that are gonna continue to climb. They're gonna continue to climb. Yep. I kind of thought like, what would happen happen to the YouTube? gaming community channels there would be a lot of channels that would just yeah because there's a lot of channels that are they're basically hunting channels they just, yeah they hunt that's all they do. but uh, if the games are like worthless or like what not that, nearly like uh, then are you are people sir doing those searches looking for those you know next big game that's gonna mm -hmm. go up in value there because I don't know. But anyways, guys, uh, it was just a topic that we really thought was interesting. We were surprised that, you know, for as much time and effort and money, I guess, that we put into this collection, yeah. how at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter as long as we're enjoying what we have. And we want to enjoy everything we can. Yeah. So if it could be affordable to everybody, everybody could enjoy it. That's the way I see it. I want yeah. everybody to be able to have the I, same level of fun. I look at the money that has been spent as that it was all fun time. Yeah. Because I, I enjoy hunting. I enjoy the time we spent, like going in on Saturdays and stuff, whether mm -hmm. it be at uh, yard sales, flea markets, pawn shops, whatever. I loved all that time. I would admit it, that was worth just the price of the games. And oh, stuff. yeah. And then the time we get to sit here in the game room, you know, three or four of us or five of us sometimes are playing these games, it's well worth the price. You can spend a lot more money and doing a lot less. Oh yeah, you know? I think we're both on the same page that there's no way we would just pick up and sell this entire collection. Nope. No. I have don't have any intentions ever selling this. The hunt... I will The thrill of the in. hunt is just not as great as the thrill of being able to play the games and come down here and just go... <sighs> This is awesome place. Yep. Like this is our happy place. I don't want to mm -hmm. take away my happiness. No. I want to sell my happiness. No. no. Like, like real life is tough. There. It, works, it is. Works not fun and stuff. It is. And responsibility being an adult. Yeah. You get to come down here and kind of forget that and do your thing there yeah. for a couple hours. Let the crash happen, guys. We're all for the crash, but you know, let us know in the comments how you feel. Hashtag crash 2023. <laughs> Let's start it happening. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks to CJR for putting up the topic to begin with. Thanks for being a cool guy there and letting us cover the topic. Yeah, yeah. Until next time, game on with pop or soda for our American friends. I'll get ginger ale. I got Pepsi. Not sponsored by ginger ale or Pepsi. <laughs>